Next week at Beach Break, there will be a tag team battle royal where the winner will get a title shot at Revolution. The Young Bucks are also in the match, and if they win, they get to choose their challengers. Penelope Ford and Kip Sabian will get married. Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa. And Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers versus John Moxley and Pac at Phoenix. The Women's World Title Tournament is also coming up. The first round match will be Riho coming back to the company against Serena Deeb. We have a Good Brothers Young Bucks promo. The first time in five years they're wrestling together, a Bullet Club party. And the Good Brothers are very excited. They're going to beat the Dark Order tonight. Then they're going to beat up the Lucha Brothers next week. And the Bucks are cool with all that, but they want to make sure that Don Callis does not get involved. And before the Good Brothers can really respond, Kenny Omega interrupts. He wants to talk to them. Don Callis is with him. The Bucks go after them again. Omega has to run interference. And then the match starts. So tension is on the rise here. You know what i got to say about this main event? It's Dark Order versus the Bucks and the Good Brothers. And the story of this match is that the Dark Order beat the shit out of both sets of tag team champions for the majority of this match. And every single one of them got a chance to run wild. And I keep waiting for one of them to get cut off. But they just keep beating on the Good Brothers and the Young Bucks. And then finally, at the very end, they get cut off. And power bombs all around the apron. And then the Good Brothers... Hit the uh, magic killer on Grayson, Young Bucks. Follow up with the Meltzer driver, and they get the pin. Mm-hmm. So, these uh, Dark Order fellas, obviously, since the death of Brody Lee, they're over. They're super over, okay? Mm-hmm. Yes. So, obviously, my point in all of this is, they are, they've got this situation here in AEW where they've got this dark order that's super over, but they're not in any major plans. No. Okay? So, there's like a few things that you can do here. If it were WWE, they'd probably just be taken off television. Or, or, be, or beaten every week. Well, I don't think they'd be beaten Which every week. Which I guess week, they were but, beaten, but yeah. I don't think they'd be beaten every week. But my, my, my point is like... There's a few things you can do when you've got an over group, but you actually don't have any plans for them. Like, you could just have them go out there and beat random teams every week. Sure. But, like, what's the point? Yeah. They're just going to beat random teams, but they're not in the tag title picture. So they're just going to amass this amazing record but never get a title shot? That doesn't make any sense. You don't want to just, like, be beating them for no reason. So what they have come up with is... We're going to feature them in high-profile matches. We're going to give them everything, but then we're going to beat them. Which, I guess we'll find out how it works out. I mean, I have no evidence that Dark Order is less over because of any of this. I mean, I watch this match here, and they're fucking just as over as ever. And it's not like they've been on these huge winning streaks other than the... They're not over because they're winning either. No. So, I just... I was really fascinated by the way that they did this where they put him in the main event you knew they weren't going to win no and they're in there with both sets of tag team champions so i mean you could argue that the tag team champ should have been a showcase match for them but it wasn't it was all about the dark order giving all these individuals a chance to shine but you have to beat them because they're not figured in plans there's no reason to have them be winning matches whereas the other team is figured into plans yes so i didn't i didn't mind at all that they lost they are beloved comedy geeks now, but they are still comedy geeks. Hangman Page said no to them last week, and they had to cancel their party on the fly. Yes, but the way that these matches are booked is my other point. It's like you never feel like they're being buried, even though no. they're losing all of these no. matches. Not at all. Not one bit. Yes, that's good. Yes. So my other question about this is, I haven't been paying attention to the Young Bucks entrances throughout the year, but maybe they've always had this graphic and I just never noticed. But I, could, I found it funny that they went to Kenny Omega's house and saw the oil painting of Omega and Don Callis shirtless together. And then they come out here for their entrance this week, and there is a big giant video on the screen of Nick and Matt flexing, and on his biggest day, the Ultimate Warrior was no match for the physiques these men had in this bad graphic. Hey. <laughs> Maybe it's always been there. I just never noticed it before. But if they threw that in as a response to Kenny and Don's oil painting, that's amazing. So the Bucks do a promo about the Battle Royal. They point out if they win, they can pick anybody to challenge. And they eye contact the uh, 
Good Brothers. But the Good Brothers are down with that. They all did the too sweet thing. And Ray Phoenix runs out to fight. And there's this big brawl going on. Moxley's out there to even the odds. And the big final spot is Moxley is alone in the ring. Kenny Omega runs out to hit him with a belt from behind. But Moxley turns, sees him coming, kicks him, paradigm shifts him, kills him. <laughs> it's, it's actually the exact same thing as what happened to Jesse Kamea in the tag match on NXT. Kenny essentially got the hot tag by being the last guy to run out, but he hit the ring and was instantly killed. Yes, this was total Steve Austin stuff. Yes. Where this guy is not a dumb baby face. No. The baby face is the smartest guy in the ring. And this dastardly heel runs out, and he's going to try to jump this guy from behind. And Moxie just casually turns around, boots him, and gives him the DT. I love that spot. Yes. Because your baby face is supposed to be smart. Your heel is supposed to be dumb. Yeah. This is fucking common sense from the dawn of fucking time. Yes. And I got it right. I thought this show was awesome. Do we uh, need to bother it. voting? I believe we're both voting for all elite wrestling. I mean, this actually, you know, sometimes we'll go, well, you know, it was close, probably a 10 night. This was a 10 8 week. Yeah. I thought AEW smashed them. Dynamite was awesome, everyone. Yeah. Go, watch, go watch Dynamite if you want. And know. it was so good that they smashed them, but it wasn't like NXT sucked. Right. NXT just existed this week. Whereas AEW was a very, very good show. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full length shows. Down there on the bottom right hand side of the screen, click that join button. And when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the join button, sign up today. You can also click subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.